Hey guys, today I want to take a look back at a one-issue alien story from Dark Horse Comics titled Earth Angel. Now in case you're not familiar with the term Earth Angel, it was a 50s song by the Penguins. The song was also featured in Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox playing guitar on the song at the school dance. The song is a fitting title for the Aliens comic with the issue taking place sometime in the 1950s in America. The publisher's summary for the comic from Dark Horse reads as follows. In the age of diners, black leather jackets, and Buddy Holly comes a monster worse than any that ever made popcorn fly in front of a drive-in screen, the Alien. Legend creator John Byrne has long been a fan of the Aliens films and he jumped at the opportunity to tell his story of the first alien invasion the one that took place in 1950s suburban America. If you aren't familiar with the work of John Byrne, he's a Canadian artist and writer responsible for the Dark Phoenix run on the Uncanny X-Men, and he also worked on Marvel's Fantastic Four comics, as well as Superman for DC Comics. Our story picks up with a typical 1950s looking couple named Matt and Lou, who are out exploring the woods when they come across a recently crashed spaceship. Being a good Samaritan, Matt quickly rushes over to the now burning ship and flings the hatch open to discover the ship's pilot. With almost no time left to spare, the couple is able to drag the pilot out of the ship right when the flames fully engulf the vehicle. Lou even notes that it was as if the craft was designed to leave no trace of itself when it crashed, thinking that the fire may have been set off by the ship or its pilot. When Lou asks why the ship crashed in the first place, Matt simply says it's due to the alien not having any eyes. The couple are then able to get the alien to a doctor where the dead face hugger is easily removed from the strange visitor's face. The doctor knows that this is way out of his league, so he puts in a call to Washington for assistance. It's just then that the alien on the table wakes up in a panic, and some type of alien parasite rips itself free from the alien's chest cavity, spraying blood and organs everywhere. I would note here that this chestburster seems to have an eye cavity and brow unlike any that we've ever seen on any other bursters. It is possible that this alien chestburster has used its DNA reflex and incorporated the eyes and brow of this alien into its own physiology. We now pick back up with a group of biker hooligans who are hanging out at their local dive bar when one of these guys exits out back to relieve himself. And this is when we get our first really good shot at Burns' interpretation of the alien xenomorph used in this story. Even when hunched over like this, the alien stands at at least 9 to 10 feet tall. It has long gangly arms and legs, along with the standard elongated head. Yet it is here at the alien's head that we see the main differences from the more modern xenomorph. This version of the alien has two bulbous eye-like structures on the front of its skull, yet they seem to be covered in the same bony chitin-like structure that the rest of the skull is covered in. I've gotta say, I really like seeing this different take on the alien since we all know that depending on the host and environment, that the aliens can take many different forms. So by now the biker who was taking a leak never returned, and now some of his buddies are out back of the bar looking for him. One of them finds the alien and now we get a much better shot at the top of its head. Although I should say her head, because to me this looks like it may be a queen of this variant type of alien. She definitely has a crown on her head similar to that of a queen, and we can also see eggs already placed around on the ground near her. The first biker that finds the queen is quickly killed, and when his other two buddies come running to his screams, they are grabbed and face the same fate as their friend. We now pick back up with Dan, the doctor from before, along with his wife and daughter, Allie. After seeing what he saw back at the doctor's office, he has loaded his family into their car and he's taking them to his mother's house to get them away from whatever the hell it was that he saw come out of that damned alien. Unfortunately for Dr. Dan, there is now an alien standing in the road in front of their car and he doesn't have time to swerve and miss it. The alien abomination plunges headfirst through the front windshield of the car, knocking a lit cigarette lighter out into the seat of the car. A fire has now begun in the cabin and the alien is stuck midway through the windshield screaming in agony and trying to get at young Allie. Just as the flames are starting to fully engulf the car, Dan rips his daughter from the seat and runs off with his wife as the car explodes. The doctor and his family now find themselves on the side of the road surrounded by alien eggs when out of nowhere the rest of the gang of bikers comes roaring down the road, presumably looking for their lost friends. They see the young family and begin to circle around them on their bikes. Suddenly we come to a man on the ground with a dead face hugger near him. 
when a chestburster rips free from his ribcage and attacks one of the other bikers. The biker then swerves uncontrollably and crashes into a tree, igniting into flames, burning some of the aliens and killing them. Dan sees this and quickly tells the others that they need to burn these things to death. One of the bikers is helping remove a face hugger when acid blood ignites a lighter inside of his jacket pocket. Dan sees this and grabs the jacket and tosses it on the pile of alien eggs and then quickly grabs a can of gas from one of the bikes and begins dousing the eggs with gasoline. The egg pile ignites, killing the face huggers and burning up the remaining alien eggs, as well as some of the corpses that riddle the ground. In the aftermath, the military shows up to check out the situation, likely being called in when Dr. Dan called Washington earlier on in the comic. They find the burned out charred remains of facehuggers and decide to seal off the site. We end the story with the doctor and his family finally arriving at his mother's house. In the last panels, we can see the doctor talking with someone on the phone when they ask him what his name is and he replies, Ripley. My name is Dr. Daniel Ripley. And that is how we end this comic, guys. I know some of these extended universe comics can be a little more cheesy, but I have to say I actually enjoyed this issue. After seeing the Deacon and Neomorph along with other different types of the Xenomorphs, I just love seeing different variant looks on the aliens that have been taken throughout the Alien franchise. I've always been a fan of John Byrne's work, so it's really cool to see him get to do his own take on an alien story. On top of that, most of the alien stories are set in the future, so it was refreshing to see an alien story that took place in the past. If you guys like this story and you want to read the whole comic, you can purchase it by going online and searching for Dark Horse Comics, Aliens Earth Angel, and the story is also included in one of the Aliens Omnibus books. Let me know down below if you guys have any questions or comments, and if you liked the video, if you could leave a like, it helps out the channel so much, and if you haven't subscribed yet, why not for all the future Aliens goodness to come. Thanks again for watching guys, take care, and I hope to see you next time.